Simon says, uh, turn to James chapter 3. No, we, we really won't be doing this at all. But um, tonight we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be talking about talking. More specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, tongues. More specifically, like how we use our tongues. So, um, who has a tongue, right? I've actually, over the last few weeks, been going around checking and seeing who has tongues. And as far as I'm aware, you've all got tongues. So, this applies to everyone who, who's got a He's got a tongue. Uh, James chapter 3, verse 1 to 12 is where we'll start. James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12, if I can find it myself. Okay, we'll start from verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters knowing that we will receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which, though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. All right, let's uh, have, a, have a quick word of prayer. Uh, Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, uh, this, this evening. We thank you that we can be here and we can just uh, spend some time in your word. Lord, I pray that you be with the uh, Arabs in the other congregation and that you be with me, Lord, that you would help me to uh, just be able to shine some light on the truths of your word and that perhaps something which we can uh, talk about or learn tonight would help us to uh, avoid avoid some obstacles that would beset us or help us to become more like you Lord, or help us in that endeavor. So we pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, so the tongue. Uh, the tongue, it's, it is quite, a, it's quite an interesting thing. Uh, you know, it's the, 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 strongest, the strongest muscle in the body. It's actually not. I, I thought it was, and then I, then I looked it up, and it's actually, the, the tongue isn't a isn't a muscle, it's eight muscles which are like intertwined and, and figuring out what the strongest muscle of the body is. Um, if, if you guys do that and then let me know and you'll probably be coming up with different answers and different reasons why. But anyway, it's not the tongue, but the tongue is an incredible muscle um, or series of muscles. And James, he spends quite a while speaking about, speaking about this, this tongue. So he starts off in verse 1 saying, uh, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. And what he's sort of saying here is, you know, those who are in authority, they're going to be held more accountable. So if you're responsible, um, then you're, you know, you're more accountable. With power comes, uh, comes the responsibility. To whom much is given, much shall be required, as it says in Luke chapter 12. Uh, and then... When it, goes, when it goes to, uh, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. The tongue is a, it's a very difficult thing to control. Uh, it's so easy to, 
you know, you've heard of the, you know, you, you slip of the tongue, right? So you might, uh, you might say something and then you thought, oh man, I shouldn't have said that. That's just a, a slip of the tongue. But even that little slip, even that little slip of the tongue, right, that can, um, that can, really, have some, that can really have some effect. That can uh, have some, some huge impact. And what James is saying here is if someone can control their tongue, uh, they can essentially have like mastery over, or you know, the same would be a perfect man. So it's, it's extremely difficult to do. And then he goes on and he says, you know, we have bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, uh, and we turn about their whole body. And then in verse 4, he says, Behold also the ships, though they be so, which be so great, they're driven of, of fierce winds, but they're turned about with a very small helm, whither so ever, or wheresoever the governor listeth. So uh, I don't know if we know much about ships, but I thought, you know what, um, this sounds quite interesting, so I started looking at ships. In fact, um, you know, thinking about helms and, uh, you know, rudders and all of these things, maybe you're not sure what they, uh, they, they look like. So we've got a, a, a picture, actually, um, of a, a rudder. Okay, so there's like a rudder on the left, there's a big propeller, um, and then over on the uh, on the right of the screen, you've got an ancient an ancient ship, which is probably more along the lines of the kind of boat that they'd have in their days. So uh, that's actually kind of an interesting one up the top. That's a, like one of those Roman ramrod ships. Right? So so you've got like these slaves in the galley, and they're all rowing, um, which is a, really not a, a good job. But you'd have strong arms, I guess. And and if you can maneuver that rudder, you actually swing the ship, right? And then at the, at the front of the ship, they've got this ramrod, and you can actually poke holes uh, in other vessels and sink them. So that's sort of what naval warfare was like, because they didn't have cannons back in, you know, 2,000 years ago. So they'd have the, uh, they'd have the, uh, the, the guys who are rowing, and they'd have the, the, you know, the sails capturing the winds, and then they would turn and try to smash a hole uh, in, in the enemy ship, and then get away and let it fill up with water and then sink them, right? So, um, so that's sort of what's, what's going on here. So uh, on, the, on the big ship, there's the rudder at the back, and it looks pretty big, and to be fair, that's a pretty big rudder, but it's a much, much bigger ship. Like, in, in relation to the, the size of the rest of the ship, it's quite small. And then, um, like, that whole ship, see that, like, those all, all things? That's, that's the rudder. And, you know, it's just about whether you, you move them a little bit wider that's going to work out uh, whether the, the ship goes to, um, I don't know, Australia, Afghanistan. Afghanistan would be a weird place to go because it's landlocked. Maybe Tasmania or Taiwan, okay? Like, it's, depending on, depending on where, the, where, you, where you steer this ship, uh, it's going to end up in totally different places, okay? Um, so, what have we got? So, we've got the, um, we've got the ship, we've got the helm, um, you've got the person who drives the ship, he's the, he's the helmsman, right? And, and if you're going to be piloting a ship, right, you, you need to be paying attention to your surroundings. You can't just be like, yeah, no worries, it's, you know, my ship, and you, you'll go and crush all the other ships. So you can cause a whole lot of damage. And even if it's just a little ship, man, like, if that, if that hits something else, um, there's, there's going to be some, some trouble. Who, who here's got their, uh, their L's now? Quite a few of us, right? Getting their L's soon. And you're kind of, even if you're... Even George has got his, well, he's got his full license now, and he drives the ute. So you can do some serious damage with the ute if, if, you know, if someone just swings into your lane, especially if you're a motorcyclist. But you can, you can get taken out. Even if you're just driving a small, like, Suzuki Swift, you know, if you're behind that wheel, just a twitch of that wheel, and that can, that can actually change people's lives. Like, it's no joke. Getting behind the wheel of a car is a responsibility. And having a tongue... Right? It actually is. It's amazing the, the power that our words can have. Okay? So, now he says also in, in verse 3, he says, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth. So, I, I don't know who here has actually ever ridden a horse. Um, a few. You've ridden a horse? Cool. I've never ridden a, I've never ridden a horse. You've, okay. So, so, yeah, maybe like 20 minutes. I've ridden horses. And, and did you just jump on the horse? You just jumped on the horse and off you went? Like... No, right? They would have, you know, probably put all this, you know, saddle, and they would have put bits on the horses in the horse's mouth, um, like a bridle cord. 
So a bridle is, is something that you use to restrain something, okay? So you can bridle your tongue. Uh, actually, we've got a, a um, if you go over, so you've got, it's a massive horse, right? Went with like the biggest horse I could find. So, so we've got here a, a horse with a bridle. And with that bridle, um, that, ho that massive horse, which is multiple horsepower, is um, restrained and controlled. So, pretty cool. Uh, and then, then it goes on, and he, you know, he uses a lot of illustrations, and he says, the tongue is a fire. Uh, you know, how great a matter, a little fire. In the world. Is, now she's here. Yeah, now she's here. Yeah, now she really know, like, think that this came from the, the, the recent bushfires. And um, depending on the... can really start something quite catastrophic. So, um, you know, and... and wrong word at the wrong time, you know, that can, that can really start a fire. It's funny, for all of these illustrations, there's sort of like something it can be used for good and something which it can be used for bad. Now this is much, very much focusing on, on the negative side, the potential for damage. But ships, you know, like ships are used for ramming holes in other ships. Uh, you, can, you can use it to food around to hungry people, right? Or you could use a ship to take Apostle Paul on his journeys. You know, so, so you've got, you know, we, we can have a, a campfire that we'll all enjoy and warm ourselves up. If you, if you drive in a car which has a spark plug, right, those little happening and, and allowing your car application, but there's also destructive application. And that's very much with the, so the, the, the takeaway here is that in our words, Okay, they, they have effect, they have consequences. So that's a responsibility, right? We, we should not just, we, we, you know, you wouldn't get behind the wheel um, while you were sleeping, okay? Or, uh, so, and, and in that same way, we've got to watch what we say. And then, he, and then in, um, in verse 7, he talks about, uh, you know, there's different kind of, kind of, kinds of beasts and birds and serpents and things in the air. They're tamed. Uh, but the tongue, no man can tame. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Okay, so this is, you know, it's not, oh, you know, the tongue, watch out for the tongue, then he moves on to the next. This is like, you know, he's spending a solid portion of his letter talking about, you know, really, really, really watch out. Okay, watch out for this tongue, because, um, you know, it's no joke. Uh, so then what happens after that is, well, he says, therewith we bless, the, we, we bless God, bless we God, even the Father, but then we curse men, which we are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. So this, it's like there's something wrong here, okay? There's something wrong, because with our, with our, with our mouth, you know, we're saying to, to God, we're, we're praising Him, we're praising his greatness. We're praising his creation. Um, and then with tearing people apart. And, well, it, it happens, right? So we can't deny that it, that it happens, but, but something's gone wrong. Something's corrupted. And, you know, ever since the fall, we've got this, this, uh, this is one, one of the areas which has been corrupted is our speech. So what we say with, it, with our mouths, we have to be able to where we should be. All right? Otherwise, our, our speech will corrupt. Verse 11, it says, Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree have you know, olive berries and a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield water fresh. So really, it's sort of like, this shouldn't be possible, what we're seeing here. Like, it, it should just be, you know, you're either, you're, you've you know, got a, a, like a good tongue or a bad tongue, but, uh, and, and then there's this, this idea, who's heard of the term like a forked tongue? It's as if there's one thing happening here and another ha thing happening there, be, you know, two-faced. And that, the whole thing is sort of coming from that, that same angle, I believe. And, and as Christians especially, right, um, we, should, we should have part in that. So, the, the key takeaway here is uh, 
the, having, having a tongue, right, which, which we all have, right, uh, that's something which is helpful. And with it comes responsibility, okay? Uh, you, you, you drive a car and you're responsible. Lives are at stake. You might think, well, it's just my tongue, my words. It doesn't really have too much effect. Uh, but that's not the case. We'll, we'll dive into this um, a little bit more. Actually, let's go to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 8 to 11. Proverbs chapter Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end therefore, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. All right, so what you hear is you're like, hurry to to get into an argument don't be in a hurry to go and strive with someone uh, because you know what if and this, is, this is sort of from an angle of self self, -preser uh, self preservation but this is sort of that you be judged principle because if we're honest we've all got shortcomings right we've all got weaknesses to point out the weaknesses of other people, uh, people are going to be quick to point out the weaknesses of us. And we kind of, you know, we should show grace to other people. Need people to show grace to us. And then this is quite interesting. In verse 10, it says, Lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. There are some things, uh, if, if you get a reputation, right, for being um, a slanderer, if you get a, a, a really, if, if you get a reputation for something, that can be really, really, really hard to get rid of. Um, so, you're, you know, really young, even when you're, when you're not, even if you're 10, right, it's like, no, that kid's a, you know, a tittle-tattle, and, you know, he, he smashed my sandcastle, but then when I smashed his, he went and told everyone, but you know, his, and then, then everyone's out to get the little tittle tattle and then they don't want to play with him anymore. So it kind of, it, the, the, the reputation carries forward and Joel knows exactly what I'm, but you know, you've, you've sort of got this, um, th this follow you, especially when you get into your, your adult life, uh, the, the infamy, because you know, the, once, once you get a reputation for something, yeah, that's, you kind of, you kind of stuck. And, um, then in verse 11, though, it says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pitchers of silver, or as Pastor said, they of ice cream in a big bowl. What you have here is the, uh, you know, with the, with the words, we have to watch them, and there's, there's the potential for a lot of damage, but there's also potential for good. So with that in mind, Let's maybe look at ways that we can use our words, ways that we can use our tongues in a manner which is, shall we go with good or bad? Like, which one? Because we'll kind of alternate, I think. That would be more interesting. You want to, like, good or bad? Go, right, we'll go with something which is good. Okay, so edifying, right? In, in Colossians, it says, uh, Let the word of God dwell with you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns, Spiritual song. So, so this is a good use. Like we're singing, we're praising God, we're edifying, we're building up, we're encouraging, we're strengthening each other. That's a good use of the time, and that's what we should do. You know, when we when we go out and we're going to be around people, you know, if we're if we're just thinking, oh, I'm here for myself, and you, you know, whatever it is. Maybe it's not going to be a great interaction because someone will step on your toes of them and then there's going to be you know, an argument. But if you're going thinking, uh, you know, 
I want to be able, I want to be a blessing to others. I want to be able to encourage others. That's that's a good place to start. And then realizing other people, you know, they have their problems and they have their, and so do I. But then maybe if we can uh, point each other to Christ, then we can be we can be better, right? We can be better better together, if if that makes sense. I think that makes sense. So so that's one way, right? We can use our our words. In a way that builds other people up, and then you know, the flip side of that, if you're if you've got a, a mindset which is, you, hear someone say, oh yeah, you know, so and so, and they're just, you know, saying mean things about someone else, maybe you will think, well, let's, you know, focus on something else, or perhaps we can change the topic, or perhaps you should go and speak to them and and settle it with that person because. You know, I, I think that we can all, well, I can, you know, there are times where I've not really intentionally just talk about someone in not a very nice way. The person who I'm talking to actually turns around and says, hey, you know what, why don't you go and say it to that person instead? Then, then that's to me. It stops it right there. It's, you know, it puts out the fire before it, I love there, turns into one. So that's, that's really, um, I, I think that's really I've got it. There's, there's another Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. This is Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. And there's another slide for that too. I, I really like this slide. So um, it says, A brother offended is harder to be won in a strong city, and their contentions or their, their arguments are like the, their disagreements are like the, the bars of a castle. So a brother offended is harder to be won than a walled city. What I've got here is like a artist, an artist's representation. And just imagine, right, you're in ancient Greece and you're trying to conquer a city. Now, uh, on, the, on the right, you've got these um, people with these, these siege walls and they're assaulting, this, they're assaulting these walls. This guy who's just gotten this, like, this spiky contraption thing dropped on him and he's not having a great day. But this is really quite an interesting photo. Got like these. I think they're pedaling. In the, I don't. I don't know if this was ever built. Um, these these contraptions. But it just you know here is uh, bringing back a walled city. That's that's rough. Like the more I look at this this photo, there's just so much going on. Like the art. But you know what? <laughs> what what normally happen is you tower. Like you've you've a armies and they'll surround a city and. Um, and then they'll try to starve them out, and then they'll surrender. But if you have to rush walls, uh, you know, it's going to be... Just imagine if you're the first person who has to run up the ladder. Like, you know, you're the first soldier who has to run up the ladder, and everyone's just waiting. That guy, I don't know if you can see him, he's got like this like spiky thing on a swingy stick. And he's just going to, you know, as soon as that guy gets up there, he's on. So you know, taking a walled city is, is rough. You know, you can't call in an airstrike, but... Uh, or, or use a tank, or might, maybe I'd use a tank, but offended is harder to win back than a walled city. Okay? So uh, that means how much better would it be if instead of saying those words, instead of just blurting out with our tongue, we, uh, you know, we were a bit more careful, a bit more prayerful about what we were, uh, we, what we were to say. So with our tongues, we can, uh, we, we can build people up or we can tear people down. You can destroy someone's reputation uh, with, with some thoughtless comments that get out of hand. And, you know, you might start the first spark or you might spread the spark. Once you've done that, it's, it's actually out of control. Like, you can't necessarily pick up the phone and say, oh, you know what, I didn't mean to say that. And, oh, really? I've just told five people. And then someone's like, oh, man, I just posted it on the WhatsApp group, you know, and then suddenly everyone knows and there's nothing you can do. Even if, even if you apologize and you turn around and you put out that little spark that you started, it's like, no, the, the damage might be done. So, so, so watch out, right? Um, and, okay, so what we have is we have the tongue as something which has the capacity for great good and great evil. And then what we have is we have, we can do good and we can do bad 
uh, with our tongue, it depends on how we use it. Uh, probably, if you can actually just black that one out, though, it will be distracting because there's, there's actually so much detail in that siege photo. Anyway, so the, the, the real uh, crux of the matter, though, boils down to something which is beyond the surface. It's more than just your tongue and how you use your tongue. It is the heart of the matter. In fact, it is the heart of the matter. If we turn to uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, we'll see exactly that. Matthew chapter 5, verse 18 says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, right? So, and then he actually goes on, he's like, you know, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Actually, the context of that story, so what you have is, um, you've got these disciples, right, and they, you know, they're eating without having hands that are properly washed. And I'd recommend, by the way, washing your hands. But uh, the, the Pharisees, they jump on it and they're like, what's with this? You're eating with unwashed hands. And, and Jesus, he's like, okay, well, you know, this is a good opportunity to point out their hypocrisy. And he goes, it's not about some physical dirt on your hands that defiles a man. That which defiles a man, that, that, that which comes out of the mouth, it's a reflection from what's in your heart. Now, I want you to think really carefully about this. We're almost done. Why does someone gossip, right? What, you know, do you really wake up and, you know, one day and, and you think, oh, well, I'm going to just um, go and, and, and talk rubbish about someone else uh, behind, behind their back? Or is there maybe some thought behind it? Maybe there's some intention which is not so obvious. Let's think about it. Perhaps, well, perhaps we want attention, right? Maybe, maybe we, we just want people to listen to what we have to say. That's something. Uh, and then there's malice. Malice or malicious intent is when we actually have ill will towards someone. We actually want to, to cause harm to someone. And, you know, it talks about murders and, you know, blasphemies and, and so forth. And it's saying, well, where are these coming from? These things come from within the heart. And, you know, as, as, as Christians, we believe that we have a sinful nature, right? We have a sinful nature. It's not that everyone is good and uh, it's like, no, we're, we're made in the image of God, but man is fallen, right? Man is fallen. And, and the heart, there is this corruption, right? So we need to, 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 well, we need to be cleansed. We need to be washed. We need to be sanctified. Uh, otherwise, these corruptions, they're going to make themselves manifest. And one of the ways that they will present themselves is through our speech, which can be very destructive, right? Um, now, if our, if our heart is, okay, you know what? We, if, if our heart is in the right place before God, uh, that's likely going to, to help us control our tongue and to be more measured in the things that we say. Now, we've got to be careful here because sometimes uh, we can kind of become a bit too clever for ourselves and we can think or fool ourselves or pretend to be saying something out of concern, but in reality, uh, that, that might not actually be what's happening. And, and you might think, well, what are you talking about? Maybe I'll, let's have, an, let's, let's have an illustration. James and Lawrence, can you come up to the front? Actually, start, to start off, we'll just have James and then Lawrence. Okay, so let's just say James here, um, he, he comes to church, and I think to myself, and, and I'm not his brother, so I don't see him at home, but I'm thinking, yeah, James, something's, something's, I don't know, something's not quite right. And, or may, maybe something's right, but for me, I pick up that something's not quite right. So I'm going to check it, check him out and, uh, you know, see if everything's okay. So I go, hey, James, you know, how are you going? You know, like, you know, whatever, give him a slap on the back, right? Or whatever, whatever people do. And, you know, how are you doing? Is everything all right? Just something you said to so-and-so, uh, I don't know, it, it just came off, it, it, it sort of came across uh, really quite uh, 
ab abrupt and you just seem to be, I don't know, I just thought I'd just, I don't know, see if everything's okay, I don't know, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about you. So now, now that's quite awkward, right? Because, and even, even then that was a bit awkward, it's safe to stay here by the way. So because if you come and you want to speak to someone about something which isn't, oh, how are you doing good or busy or how's the weather, um, you know, and, and you're actually concerned about someone, then, yeah, maybe it's going to be a little bit awkward, but is James going to turn around and think, man, Simon, I, I, I really, really resent the way he spoke to me just then? Probably not. Okay, he might, he might think, okay, this is a bit weird, and, you know, we're kind of this level friend, and Simon's kind of acting as if we're this level friend, but, but that's okay, right? That's all right, and, and if anything, maybe he'll appreciate it, and maybe he'll say, actually, you know what, um, I've been struggling with some things, or maybe he'll just say, yeah, actually, pray for me, or maybe he'll say, everything's fine. And then later on, he'll come back and tell me that something's not quite right, or, you know, there's a few different things that could happen. But Lawrence, come up here. Now, if I then go, instead of that, I say, hey, Lawrence, you know James? I don't know, man, something's wrong. Uh, he's kind of, he's acting really funny. I, I'm just thinking, do you think it could be this, or do you think it could be that? And then you can be like, actually, I heard something else, and then we just start having this conversation about James. Man, I really hope he's all right, that guy. He was a good lad at one stage of his life. Man, he's too far gone now. I guess that's a lesson for us all. Hey, James, good to see you. Yeah, all right, no worries. So you get the idea. So, so that might seem as if it's coming. That's all right, you can sit down, right? But you, it, might, it might seem like it's coming from a, a place of compassion or care, but why am I helping Lawrence? And it, actually, it says in Proverbs, it says, if you've got a, a, uh, an issue with the, this is back in Proverbs chapter 18, it says, if you have a, Proverbs chapter 18, no, nope, Proverbs chapter 25, Proverbs 18 was the one with the, um, the walled city. It says, debate thy cause with thy neighbor's friends. De de debate thy cause with or, you know, if you've got a problem with someone, go and speak to their, um, you know, their Sunday school teacher. Or, you know, maybe Sunday school teacher's not the worst one. But, you know, it says, talk to the, minute, talk to the neighbor himself, right? If you've got an issue, if you've got an issue with someone, uh, then talk with them. It's, it's, the best way to it's the best way to resolve something. Once you have, once you involve other people, especially you know, outside of where that person is, uh, then, then things get out of hand and then, you know, you've spread rumors and then you think, oh man, I shouldn't have spread that rumor. Oh well. Uh, so, so that's, that's a problem. Uh, so, all right. So what we, ha what we have is we've got the, the tongue is something which is powerful. Uh, it has a lot of influence. It has a lot of impact, especially if it's used the wrong way. We can use our tongues. We can use our speech for good. Uh, and we can use our speech for, for stuff that is bad. And the, the, the root of the matter, the crux of the matter, comes from the heart. It comes from within. So we have to examine our hearts. We have to do that regularly. In I think Psalm 139 verse 23, the psalmist writes, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be some wicked way in me. And, you know, maybe think about that a bit like a... I just imagine you've got a, a garden, Everyone, anyone's mom's got gardens at home, right? And, and it's like weed free, okay? So it's weed free perhaps, but uh, there might actually be some seeds of weeds that are in there now or that will come in. Because sooner or later, there will be weeds in that garden, right? And think about the garden maybe as your heart and, and we have to keep on. It's not about oh, our heart is good right now, so it's, it's going to stay that way. We have to keep weeding it. We have to keep weeding it. Um, and if we, if we stop paying attention, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be overgrown, right? So uh, we have to keep searching our hearts and, uh, and asking God, you know, show us, you know, why am I, why am I saying what I'm saying? Uh, why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Because if we don't, uh, one of the effects will be that our speech is going to uh, is, is going to be unrestrained. It's going to be unbridled, and and then it's going to get out of hand. Okay. So, to sum up, we've got our uh, the words. We all have tongues, right? We've all got tongues. So we have a responsibility, right? Just like you get behind the wheel of a car, 
uh, you now have a responsibility uh, with, with where you turn that wheel. So you have to pay attention, you have to be careful, because the words you say could actually have a huge effect on someone's life, or even a family's life, or, or a church, okay? You would, you would perhaps be surprised by how out of control a rumor gone wrong can get, right? So it's like, all right, well, we've got these, these tongues, these instruments, these tools. We can use them for something which is destructive, or we can use them for something good, you know? We can edify one another. We can build each other up, encourage one another, praise the Lord, right? These are all fantastic uses of the tongue. And the heart of the matter is at the heart. Where is our heart? We have to uh, continue to work on, well, how can, we, how can we draw closer to God? How can we uh, examine ourselves and ask God to examine us and say, you know, uh, where is our heart? Because no matter how hard we try, if we're just trying to control our tongue and control our words, uh, but, but there's no change to the heart, uh, it's only going to get so far. It's only going to get so far. All right. So with that, let's close with a word of prayer. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, uh, this evening. We thank you for this, uh, just this 